I think I finally figured it out, the purpose of the iPad Pro. Hear me out. So, I've been using the iPad Pro, the M4 generation, for five months now. And I think I finally found its purpose on the Apple ecosystem. Yes, I know it's weird to say that because this is almost a $2,000 machine and it took me five months to figure it out, but I finally understand how to use it properly, how to fit it in in my ecosystem and how to take the most advantage out of it. So if you are excited, drop a down below, subscribe to the channel, let's talk about the M4 iPad Pro. Yes, if you don't know, I'm a student. I'm an industrial engineering student and I've been using the M4 iPad Pro mainly as my college device. And you might be thinking, isn't that too expensive to spend $2,000 plus the Magic Keyboard on a device that's going to be your college device? No, because hear me out, this is not just my college device. This is currently my main computer, my everyday computer. My 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip currently is my editing rig, is my desktop PC. Of course, I still have the M4 Mac Mini running around and that challenge is pretty fun. But my 16-inch MacBook Pro, since the beginning of this five-month term, has become simply my editing rig. It's where I edit my videos, I edit my thumbnails, but most of the time I'm using my 13-inch M4 iPad Pro. I watch all my movies, all my TV shows, I watch YouTube videos, <laughs> I search anything or everything here on the web. I use this as my main device for everything. So, as a college student, the M4 iPad Pro has become my main computer. If I wasn't a YouTuber, I wouldn't need my 16-inch MacBook Pro. And that's funny because over the last few years, we have been talking about the iPad Pro replacing our MacBooks and everyone was saying it is not possible. Well, in the last five months, if I was a YouTuber, I just did it. And oh, one thing, my brother also did that. My brother needed a new computer about three months ago and I'm recommending it actually buying an M4 iPad Pro. He's a college student too and He's so happy. He couldn't be more happy with his purchase. He likes it to watch YouTube videos on his bed. He likes it to stu study. It's really easy. He likes to use the pen to take notes. He likes the touchscreen. It's much more intuitive. Everything about the M4 iPad Pro, he loves. Because it's really close to its iPhone, so he's very, very familiar. He did not want to learn a new system like macOS or even switch to Windows. No, the iPad Pro is really familiar to its iPhone and so he loves it. And of course, using good notes has his note-taking app, using every single App Store app that he loves on his iPad Pro is a big bonus. As for me, I love to use the iPad Pro to study. I take all my notes here and then I plug into my display and I read all my notes in my big ultra-wide display. It's a really, really used feature. Of course, I can also connect this GoodNotes 5 app to my GoodNotes app on my desktop and work at the same time in both apps and they will both show my notebook there being written, so, if you haven't used GoodNotes, it's a really, really useful app if you are a student. Of course, the iPad Pro is way more than that. Watching TV shows, watching Netflix, watching HBO, here, everything is simply amazing. The display, the mini LED display, I couldn't ask for anything more. And because of its size, its portability, and its weight, the iPad Pro is so easy to carry around to your couch, to your bed, and it does not weigh anything. Of course, if you connect this device to a Magic Keyboard, then you unlock its full power, which is <laughs> more than enough. The Magic Keyboard is a complete game changer for the iPad Pro. I do believe if you are currently want to switch from a MacBook or even a Windows PC to an iPad Pro, buying a Magic Keyboard is required because it gives you a full-on keyboard that is amazing. The Magic Keyboard from the Macs or even the iMacs is present on the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. That is actually is essential. It also gives you a trackpad, the same trackpad present on the MacBook Pros but on a smaller scale. It works beautifully well. It's all really well made, made of aluminium. The only thing that I don't like is that that weird material that they use in the back. I don't know how to describe it. It's not great. It, it, it destroys really fast. Although this year is lasting me longer than usual, I don't like it. Everything else, the materials from the keyboard, the trackpad, the aluminum they use. You can wirelessly charge your iPad Pro via the Magic Keyboard. Gives you another USB-C port. And yeah, it's heavy. Weighs around 400 grams, but it's totally, totally worth it for the iPad Pro. Turns your iPad Pro from a tablet to a computer. It does it really, really well. Of course, I don't video edit here. I could, I have Final Cut Pro for iPad, but only for Reels and TikToks maybe, sometimes. But for full-on YouTube videos, I don't enjoy it. It's still not full-fledged enough for me to use it. I love Final Cut Pro for Mac, and currently with all its new features from the new masking feature, automatic masking feature, I just love it and I cannot stop using it. As for my iPad Pro, it has turned into my main device. 
Again, use it to study, to take notes on university, use it to watch videos and movies, use it to PowerPoint and Word, note taking, whatever you want to do, your iPad Pro can do it. But if you want to do more professional work, like video editing, photo editing, or even any type of 3D rendering or coding, I wouldn't recommend you going for an iPad Pro. So here's the purpose of the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro is more of an everyday device. It's simply a device that you use for your everyday needs but it's not a professional device, in my opinion. You can use it as a professional device if you work with the Apple Pencil, a very, very cool, neat addition to the iPad Pro that is exclusive to this lineup. Of course, that's the reason that I use it, the Apple Pencil to note-taking, but of course, you can use the Apple Pencil to, I don't know, photo editing, and of course, vector making, or any type of drawing or painting, whatever. For artists, the iPad Pro is almost essential with the Apple Pencil. But other than that, the iPad Pro has become my everyday device has become my everyday computer because it's so portable, so easy to carry around and so versatile. While my MacBook Pro has been downgraded or sidegraded as my working rig. Other than that, I don't think that the iPad Pro has any more chance to replace that editing rig because currently iPadOS still has lots of things to improve and currently is not good enough to replace my file system on macOS or even my video to editing app as Final Cut Pro on the MacBook Pro. So, Yes, Apple needs to work a lot still on iPadOS. I think it's its main limiting factor. Other than that, it served me really, really well and I fit it perfectly on my ecosystem. So it fits between my iPhone and the Mac. Who can tell that an iPad Pro will fit between an iPhone and a Mac, right? But that's where exactly where it fits. It does not replace your iPhone, it does not replace your Mac, but it sits between these two devices and it sits really, really well. Is that device that whenever you are tired, you get home, you pick it up and to watch a movie or a TV show. So easy, so versatile, and so lightweight. And is that device that whenever you wanna do something fun in the kitchen, get a recipe, just pick it up, put it on a magic keyboard, prop it up, and see the recipe or the YouTube video explaining how to do it. Is that device that whenever you wanna do something at home and don't know how to do it, you just pick the iPad Pro, turn on that YouTube video, that tutorial, put it there, and learn how to use it. So the iPad Pro has become my everyday device, like I told. It has become my, I would say, safe place. It's wherever I want to do any type of work, I pick it up and I know it's going to be fun after fun and after fun. I also love to play games here. Who can tell? Because of the touch interface, the beautiful display, playing games on the iPad Pro, especially from the App Store, it's great. It's not AAA game titles, although you can do it. You can play Assassin's Creed here, you can play, I think, Resident Evil. There's lots of AAA game titles coming out for iPad Pro now. But I like to play the simple games, Fruit Ninja or Angry Birds, those very nostalgic games that I still love to play and playing them on the iPad Pro is so fun. It's like five minute sessions. So I don't have to invest that much time because I don't have it, but it allows me to clear my head of thoughts and to help me to relax. So my iPad Pro has become, I would say, my fun device, device that I want to go for whenever I want to rest. And yeah, it's simply perfect for that. Obviously, it's also great for university because it has a camera system on the back, so it allows you to scan documents, to take notes of photos, and whenever you are in class, you want to take a photo out of something in the board, you can use it. The iPad Pro is super versatile. It's also the perfect FaceTime machine now that it has the front camera on the top instead of being on the sides. It's the perfect FaceTime machine. You can carry around easy, easily everywhere and use the big screen as your canvas for the other people's camera. And it's also the perfect device now for listening to music because it's so lightweight, so portable, you can easily carry around everywhere and the speakers are insane. So the iPad Pro is the perfect media device, the perfect mobile gaming device, it's the perfect streaming device, and it's the perfect note-taking device. So as a student, as you can see, is the perfect device for me. And of course, from what you heard, you are thinking $2,000 to spend on a non-professional device to do simple stuff, everyday stuff, isn't that too much? And that's true, it is too much. But here's the thing, if you have the money, this is the best product you can have because it has no compromises. It still has the 120Hz display, the amazing mini LED display, the biggest display possible, the M4 chip to play every game that you want with no issues. And yeah, it's so lightweight, so easy to carry around, and you have access to every single accessory. Of course, you can buy the $500 iPad, but then your experience will be de degraded, and I wouldn't be as pushed to use this device over my iPhone, which is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. So if you want to spend the money, I wouldn't say it's the best deal, but I would say you will love it. Of course, if you are, don't have the money, don't do it. Don't go into debt, don't waste your money if you currently don't, are not willing to spend $2,000 on this. It's too expensive to do simple stuff, everyday tasks. So the iPad Pro 
is not necessary, it's not obligatory like the MacBook Pro and the iPhone. I would say those two, if you are currently building an Apple ecosystem, are must-haves. But the iPad Pro is a nice, I would say, addition to have if you have the money to spare. I also love to do my banking apps and all my finances here. I love to track crypto, I love to track my stocks because this device is really portable. I can be on the couch just holding it up like this and moving it up, seeing the charts, <laughs> trading and it's it's different than the MacBook because the MacBook you are on the desk, you feel like work. While the iPad Pro, you're on the couch, you can have two apps open at the same time, you can be looking at your charts and trading a bit and looking at Twitter, wherever you want. So mobile, multitasking, I think it's a strong suit on the right. iPad Pro. So let me look at my below what you think. I think I found out my purpose on the iPad Pro. But let me know if you found yours. I currently think that the iPad Pro won't be more than this. Apple wants to focus the iPad Pro on this single thing being the perfect device between the iPhone and the MacBook Pro. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. While you're there, jump back down below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.